Welcome to Pace IT's Career and Entrepreneurship Presentations. My name is Mary Keeney and this presentation covers product and services offerings and pricing part one. We're going to cover new service development, ideation process, innovation, service selection criteria, business opportunities, and design. Product development process involves multiple steps. Not all steps are applicable for all products and services. So let's look at each bit, uh, each in a bit more detail. There are three approaches to innovation. This is part of ideation. One, you can listen to the biggest customers and develop products and services that serve their specific needs. Two, you could follow the market trends and leverage the company's strengths to develop new products and services that address the market trends and leverage. Uh, and a com or a combination of the two. There are significant benefits from developing products and services that serve the needs of your biggest competitor. They can promote high profitability of the continued revenue and be your biggest supporters and promoters. Most companies look up to the innovators in the industry and then follow them, which, me which can mean significant business opportunity for you in the long run. The drawbacks of focusing on the biggest customer is that most of the time it's not real innovation, but more like incremental changes. Big customers also have big problems to solve due to their size and complexity of the business model they practice. These might not necessarily apply to smaller companies. If you include the functionalities for the big customer in your standard product, to recover your product development investment, you will have to increase the price. If you do that, smaller customers will be reluctant to pay for the extra functionality they will never use, no matter how innovative these might be. The other drawback is that incremental changes will alienate more innovative customers who expect you to, del to deliver more cutting-edge products instead of just new and improved versions of the old ones. If you ignore the needs of your biggest customers, then you are free to maintain your innovative spirit and develop products that are quantum leaps instead of incremental changes. It also focuses you to be agile and keep innovating in sprints rather than taking a forklift approach, thus satisfying your innovative change agent customers and attract new customers. However, by taking this approach, you might alienate your big customers who can't move as fast as smaller ones. The hybrid model is the hardest and, in the long run, the most expensive to implement. Depending on what the product or service is, you might end up with two different offerings. If you can afford parallel development, this option is great, but doesn't really work for small companies. Big companies like Microsoft execute this option very well, but they have the luxury of some products funding or subsidizing others. To begin ideation, first you collect your ideas from brainstorming solutions for a specific problem. Then you can screen your ideas, determining if the opportunity is logical and what the financial and strategic impacts are. You may have many sources for ideas and innovation. It is recommended that you keep a list of product ideas and keep adding new ideas as they come to you. You might not get to them right away. It may take months and sometimes years to implement them, but it is good to have a place where you keep the ideas. This slide is an example of an idea log. Look at the issues in each idea addresses. You might have different issues on your list, but this will give you a start. The next step is to evaluate using product selection criteria. To do this, select a set of qualifiers and quantifiers. Qualifiers are things that you can't necessarily measure at the time, such as the size of a new market opportunity, the impact of the IP, and impact on brand awareness. Quantifiers are things you can measure, like potential revenue you expect to get, the length of the product life cycle, and the profit margin you can get. Once the ranking is done, plot them in three categories. This slideshow uh, this slide shows an example of the, resulting of the results using information from the previous slides. After making a selection, you must complete a high-level analysis of the business opportunity, including market opportunity, 
the potential partners needed to either produce or distribute the product, and the product's commercialization potential. The next analysis was on technology you needed to develop the product. Once this evaluation is done, prioritize the finalists into three categories, which are pursue to the next phase, delay pursuit until a predetermined event occurs, and not pursue, at least for the foreseeable time. After the analysis is done, produce a high-level analysis report that gives a brief summary of what the product does, the market it serves, how it is technically doable, how it will be distributed, and what kind of resources are needed, for example, money, people, technology, partners, regulatory, etc. The process outlined in these few slides is not a groundbreaking process. It is used in, uh, in different firms by most companies. Big companies have big, complex processes. The process outlined in the previous slides works for small companies who want to keep things simple and easy and who want to spend more time developing cool products rather than filling out endless process forms. It's suggested that you start with these and keep modifying them as you develop your company. Your needs and processes will vary, so feel free to change the process to fit your needs. Once you complete your analysis and select your product, you are ready to start designing it. First, you start with an exploration process that involves collecting the detailed product requirements. How is it going to be used, by whom, and in what conditions? For example, is this a mobile app, PC app, web only, or all three? Who's going to use it, and what type of devices do they have? It is very different to develop an app for a smartphone used in the U.S. than it is to develop for developing countries where the definition of a smartphone is the old flip phones used in the U.S. 10 to 15 years ago. We've covered new service and product development, the ideation process, innovation, service selection criteria, business opportunities, and designs. Thank you for watching our video.